Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include up to 146 million risk poverty if the EU's austerity drags on. After Euro vignette, the EU asks for whom the road tolls. Ireland's want greater voice in Europe after 2014 referendum. European Union to change budget calculations to ease austerity. Plus, France calls for the EU to regulate web giants to counter dominance. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. As EU countries battle the financial crisis with austerity, average citizens get hurt while unemployment rises and social programmes disappear. Up to 146 million Europeans are at risk of falling into poverty by 2025, the head of Oxfam's EU office told Russia Today. If the damage being inflicted by the European Union's austerity measures is not reversed, the number of people trapped in poverty will increase by up to 25 million people. If that is the case, Europe will face a lost decade, leading philanthropy organisation Oxfam revealed in its new report. Now, these pol policies have benefited no one except for the banks. And why? Because of one simple turn of phrase. Too big to fail. More on this topic later in the show. Seven years after the Euro vignette directive, the European Commission is planning to permanently shift its method for measuring road pricing away from the time that a vehicle has spent on a motorway and towards the distance it has covered, according to a draft directive proposal seen by Euroactive. Time-based road charging, also known as vignettes or Euro vignettes for heavy goods vehicles, was enabled by the 2006 EU directive, but in the new directive it's dubbed a sub-optimal tool for applying the user pays and the polluter pays principle, which underwrite EU transport legislation. Tax harmonisation, folks, that's what I'm going to keep repeating here. The banking union... The VAT directives, the fiscal integration, European stability mechanism are all creative buzzwords for the creation of a federal United States of Europe. Fix that idea and mantra in your head, United States of Europe. If you're French or Dutch, English or Scots, those cultural ties are to be done away with. You are to become a European, with your parliaments neutered. I know I sound like I'm ranting, because I think it's important to be clear about what's happening. Scotland's islands are about to stake their claim for a separate place in Europe, with direct involvement in policy making in Brussels. Orkney, Shetland and the Western Isles are also targeting specific provision for them within any new European Union accession treaty. The scale of the Island Council's ambitions were unveiled yesterday at the start of a two-day conference in Kirkwall about their attempts to win greater powers. Stephen Heddle, Orkney's leader, identified enhancing the island's relationship with Europe as a crucial policy area of their campaign to win more influence and access to EU funding. Now, what is it with these people? Has Mr Heddle done any research into the political and operational structure of the EU? Look, Steve, it's like this. The EU Commission, which consists of 28 appointed, that means not elected by you, me or any other citizen in Europe, those commissioners have the power and control over all the legislation. Do you really think that Monsanto or BP Oil are going to let you and your lovely islanders from Shetland have any say or influence in your own governance? Really? Do you? Because you've got more chance of holding a snowball fight in hell. European Union finance experts have reached a preliminary agreement on changing the way the bloc determines some deficit figures, which will lessen the pressure for austerity measures in some crisis-hit economies, an EU official said on Thursday. The change to the calculation of the structural deficit would have very significant positive consequences for Spain because of its labour market structure, somewhat less for Ireland, Greece and Portugal, the official added. 
Spain is struggling to overcome record unemployment of about 26%. The change could allow the government a slightly looser fiscal stance, thereby fostering more growth. Now, the official who spoke on condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the issue said the working level agreement on the superior methodology still needs approval by a meeting of top finance minister officials from the bloc's 28 member states next week. France is pushing for the European Union to regulate global internet companies like Google, Amazon and Facebook more aggressively to counter their growing dominance over online commerce and services. In an interview published by Liberation newspaper on Thursday, France's Minister for the Digital Economy, Fleur Pellerin, said Europe needed new regulatory powers to intervene much earlier to the level playing field in the internet economy and allow the emergence of alternatives in Europe to those US web giants. She said Europe needed to be able to act quickly as soon as problems are identified rather than getting tied up in lengthy and costly disputes that did nothing to help consumers. Now, we're keeping a close eye on this. We reported earlier this week about the challenge over internet blocking by ISPs in the Netherlands. And there is also plenty of documents with regard to internet controls in our legislation section. I make no bones about this. There are countries all around the globe whose governments want to control the information flow and restrict access to the internet. A very powerful and clever man once said, he who controls the information controls the show. That man was Joseph Goebbels, the man behind Hitler's propaganda machine. Today in our video library, the policies of austerity are biting harder with increasing unemployment, loss of social welfare and services. The economies of Europe continue to spiral downwards. Yes, I know, the Bruswellian Barmy Army has been waving their 0.4% growth report and singing roll out the barrel. But I have really no faith in these buffoons to do anything successfully, unless, of course, it's screwing things up. That is not what matters, however. The fate of the people is paramount, and sadly, their future does not bode well. The people, you and me and everyone else, we are the ones with the power. These crazy kleptocrats work for you, and we are letting them get away with this nonsense. In this video, Russia Today reports on the announcement by Oxfam, which was the first story I covered in tonight's show. The Oxfam report shows a further 25 million people will be pushed into poverty by 2025. That is equal to one third of the population here in the UK. Don't let the normalcy bias take hold here, folks. It's difficult to imagine what that means. So, let me tell you. When you have that many people in poverty, crime soars. Unemployment soars. Civil unrest doesn't just take hold. It gets out of hand. Governments collapse. Sounds unbelievable. Sounds like it couldn't ever happen. We'll take a look at only recent history with the collapse of the Soviet Union. In our documentary, Betrayed, Vladimir Bukovsky said two things that rang, ring out loud and true now. The European Union is the old Soviet system in Western guise. And then he went on to say, I have lived in your future, and it didn't work. So, folks, you can ignore this and your silence will be taken by the elites to be acceptance. Or you can engage with the process and make a change. All you have to do is drop an email to your MP or MEP and ask them what they intend to do about it. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>